Welcome to Money Matters, sponsored by Evergreen Credit Union. Managing your finances during a crisis. No matter what each of us are going through, managing finances in a crisis is new to all of us. It's a good idea to stop and to take some time to plan how you will spend your money over the next several months. This week, we're going to talk about paying yourself first and establishing a savings. The importance of establishing a habit of saving and the significant value money has. No one can predict the future, so saving money can help you get through any unexpected emergency. If you think of saving before spending, you'll be on your way to becoming financially secure and avoid going into debt. Evergreen is committed to offering financial literacy programs to their members. I proudly introduce you to Evergreen's financial education team. Financial literacy is so important because it offers our members the knowledge, the skills, and gives them the tools that they need to better manage their personal finances. We reach out to local employers and offer lunch and learn programs for their employees. We've developed an online financial wellness series we set up programs at schools, in community centers, and we offer our financial education programs for free. Visit our website, egcu.org, and search for financial counseling. Click on the Contact Us button to reach out to any one of our financial professionals. Paying yourself first means putting savings first before anything else. Most people pay everything else first. You work hard for your money, so you deserve to keep at least 10% of it for yourself. Establishing this habit will have you on the path to financial freedom. Rather than focusing in on expenses, when you pay yourself first, the focus is savings through a budget process called reverse budgeting. Reverse budgeting is simple. You determine what percentage of your take-home pay that you want to save. That money is automatically going to go into a savings account, and then you budget the remaining amount of money for your living expenses. Talk with your kids about financial literacy. Youth in particular can benefit from financial education offerings that instill healthy financial habits early on. Once kids know proper money management skills, they tend to keep them and use them throughout their lives. Early financial literacy teaches kids how to have a good relationship with money, an invaluable lifelong skill that won't ever be forgotten. Today, we're talking about savings. No matter what stage of your life you are in, saving money is important. Whether you're saving for a special purchase, a college education, your first home, saving for retirement, or Establishing that essential emergency fund. Save and take it one step at a time. Let's write down a few savings goals to begin with. That's right. There's a pretty big difference in goal achievement just from writing your goals down on paper. Put them somewhere where you can see them every day. When you need to make a decision about your finances, take a look at your goal. If making that decision will keep you on track towards your goal, it's probably going to be a wise choice. An emergency savings fund is for those larger unexpected emergencies. Establishing the fund gives you the resources you need for paying that unexpected emergency without having to put it on your credit card. Now, you may be thinking, how do I establish an emergency fund? Start with a goal of building a $1,000 emergency fund. Now, write that down. No matter how much you have to contribute from each paycheck to your emergency fund, it is imperative that you start saving that money and building your fund. Don't lose hope. If you focus and you're disciplined and you make it your goal, you'll have saved that emergency fund before you know it. Take a look at your budget. Trim it. 
Consider this exercise as putting your budget on a diet. Cut out the snacks and all the things that are not absolutely necessary. Remember, your goal is $1,000. Save your spare change in a glass jar. Place your change jar somewhere where everyone in the family can see it and contribute to it. When it's full, you can add that to your emergency savings fund. Move money into your savings account automatically. Whatever you decide to set aside from your paycheck, arrange to have that withdrawn automatically. Consider a spending freeze for a week. Get the groceries you need, be certain your gas tank is full, then for one week, don't spend a dime or a nickel. Do it as a family. If one week is too long, try implementing a Friday freeze so every Friday, the family spends nothing. If your debt is paid off, save your tax refund. If you don't have a $1,000 emergency fund, put your tax money towards that. Congratulations, you've achieved your first goal. Be disciplined. An emergency fund is not for that super pair of shoes that just came on sale and there's only one pair left in your size. Don't do it. Pledge to only use this money that you've set aside for a true emergency. Accomplishing this first goal says you are committed to being financially sound. Your vision was to do what you had to do to save $1,000. Did you know 69% of Americans haven't accomplished that? But you did. You had a plan, you rallied the support of family or a financial counselor, or you were motivated by this video. But you came up with your own ideas, you strategized, and the more you saved, the more motivated you were to being successful. Now, let's take a look at your next move on your journey to financial wellness. Eliminate your debt. Use your extra money that you were putting away towards building your emergency fund and put that money towards paying off your debt. Here's why. If you don't pay off your credit card balance each month, you're paying more than you should in interest. Let's say you owe $4,000 on a credit card. The rate of interest for that card is 25%. You budget to pay $110 every month to pay off that debt. Without adding anything else to the card, you will pay $2,786 in interest alone to pay off this debt. Got your attention? Here's how you start to pay off your debt. List down all your debt. Write the balance owed, the interest paid for each, and what you normally pay each month to pay off your debt. While you're still paying all of your debt, attack one at a time by applying any extra money towards that one. Focus in on eliminating one debt at a time. Stop charging stuff. You'll be amazed at how quickly your savings will add up when you're not paying credit card interest. Make the commitment to save. We all have wants, but rather than charging them and paying thousands of dollars more than you need to, save for your purchase. Then you're in an even better position to negotiate for a better deal. Being able to pay cash is powerful. Once you've achieved your first goal of establishing that $1,000 emergency fund, and you've paid off debt, it's now time to write down your next goal. Write down how much money you would need to save to pay for three months of your living expenses. Say you had no income for three months, you would be able to maintain your lifestyle as you know it 
without worrying about how to keep a roof over your head or food on the table. And for your next goal, double that number. You'll have six months of living expenses saved up. Take one step at a time, write down the plan, be diligent. You will alleviate so much stress in your life if you are debt free and you know that you have six months of living expenses in your savings account. This is a great place to be in. Congratulations. You can now make choices that are based on your values and how you want to spend your life. Let's take a look at a few ways to make your money work for you. Look for high yield checking and savings accounts. Did you know some of the highest yields come from some of the smallest banks? That's right. A great APY tends to be from regional banks or credit unions. They may have some requirements such as treating your high yield checking account like a checking account. You'll need to use it, but the trade-offs may be well worth it. Look for credit cards that pay you back. Now, be careful to take the money that you charge every time and set it aside in a savings account. Let's say your credit card will pay you 2% for your grocery purchases. If you spend $60, take that amount of money from your checking account and move it to a savings account so when the bill comes in, you can pay off that charge and take advantage of earning 2%. Speak with a trusted financial advisor. No matter what stage you are in your life, there's a lot to be said for being able to reach out to someone who can help you look beyond your immediate needs and help you build a strong financial future. When you work with an advisor, you'll always have someone that you can turn to for advice as your life changes and for when you need to take a fresh look at your finances. Once your debt is paid and you're not planning on major purchases over the next few years, Research some various options where you can benefit from compound interest. That is the addition of interest to the principal balance, or in other words, interest on interest. It's the result of reinvesting interest rather than paying it out. So the interest in the next period is then earned on the principal sum plus previously accumulated interest. Be sure to teach your children about compound interest. If you're certain you're not going to be needing some extra money for the foreseeable future, take some of your savings and invest in a CD. A traditional CD is essentially a time-bound deposit. In exchange for a higher interest rate, you enter into an agreement to let the credit union or your bank use your money for a fixed period of time. The bank rewards you by paying you a higher interest rate than it does in a savings account or a money market account. Consider staggering your investments. Suppose you want to buy five certificates. The first certificate would mature in one year, the second, the following year, and so on. When the first investment on the ladder matures, you would reinvest the proceeds in a product with a five-year maturity. Be mindful of early withdrawal penalties for each CD. Ask your financial counselor about what CD is best for you, know the terms and the rates. Let's take a look at some tax advantages, which applies to certain accounts or investments that are by statute, tax reduced, tax deferred, or tax free. The employer-sponsored 401k is the top retirement savings account for its convenience, tax benefits, and the potential for employer matching. By contributing to a 401k automatically each pay period, workers save for retirement and lower their taxable income before receiving their paycheck. Because of the tax advantages of the IRAs, the government is essentially giving you a helping hand a powerful incentive 
to save for retirement. Contributions to Roth IRAs are made after the taxes are paid, so there is no deduction. Instead, the contribution grows tax-free. A traditional IRA provides potential tax relief today, while the Roth IRA has the potential for the most tax benefit when you retire. The Roth IRA is an individual retirement account that offers tax-free growth and tax-free withdrawals in retirement. Roth IRA rules dictate that as long as you have owned your account for five years and you're age 59 and a half or older, you can withdraw your money when you want and you won't owe any federal taxes. HSA, Health Savings Account. An HSA allows you to save for health expenses in retirement. These accounts have the potential for a triple tax benefit. You may be able to deduct the current contributions from your taxable income, your savings can grow tax deferred, and you may be able to withdraw your savings tax-free if you use the money for qualified medical expenses. Investments. Investment decisions should be driven primarily by your goals, financial situation, timeline, and risk tolerance. But factoring in federal income taxes may help you build your wealth faster. There are several different options to consider, so we suggest speaking with a financial advisor to help you select the investment products that are right for you. Make the commitment and start your saving success story today. Be dedicated to saving money, reducing debt, and investing wisely. Talk about money with your kids. Discuss big purchases with them and encourage your teens to get a job and earn money. Encourage charity giving. The benefits of all of this are endless. From everyone at Evergreen Credit Union, I'm Brenda Pollock, and we thank you for watching Savings, Establishing That $1,000 Emergency Fund, and Paying Yourself First. We hope you'll reach out to us at egcu.org. We'd love to hear from you.